may be seated. Well, welcome to all of you. Welcome to those of you joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to the wonder of Easter. The wonder of Easter is captured really well in a story told by David Peter, who uh, gave us some of the uh, Lenten service themes that we were following. He talks about a class of seven-year-olds who were gathered for Sunday school on Easter morning. And the teacher told them the story of Jesus' resurrection, and then when it was done, she asked them, What do you think was Jesus' first word when he came out of the tomb alive? And the girl raised her hand, and the teacher said, Yes. And she jumped to her feet and stretched out her hands and said, Surprise! <laughs> Jesus said, surprise! <laughs> that little girl nailed it, really. So welcome the wonder of the surprise that Jesus is risen from the dead, that he is alive to give you life and to give new life to all. Welcome in the wonder that Christ is risen. All praise to God the Father, who raised his Son in victory. All praise to Jesus, God's Son, risen from the dead. All praise to God, the Holy Spirit, The stone has been rolled away. Alleluia! He has conquered death by the cross. The absolute truth of every word Jesus said and every work he did is proven. He will, he will restore his broken people. He will raise us and make us whole again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the darkness, your kingdom of grace and truth comes by way of the cross. And your power and desire to give life is brought to light in Jesus rising. Raise us up to newness of life, that we may recall our Lord's resurrection with joy and live by the power of your Holy Spirit in our daily lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus who with you and the Holy Spirit is one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite Pauline to come forward and share the readings for celebrating Easter. The first reading for our celebration of Easter is from the prophet Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of faint, a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. 
we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a re resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Last reading is the gospel reading. If you're able, please stand. It's from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves, and he went home, marveling at what had happened. Here ends the readings for today. Well, hello, everyone. Oh, oh um, the song we're going to sing right now is a song we sang this morning at our uh, at our sunrise service. Seventy people were out there singing the song, and so I encourage you to to join in the worship that was happening this morning and now as we continue this afternoon. This is a
seated. Thank you. We lived in Britain, there was a show called One Foot in the Grave. Anybody here seen One Foot in the Grave? <coughs> yes, I knew you had. <laughs> Nobody else had. This is too bad, but oh well. Hopefully you'll get the point anyways. I didn't think anybody would have seen it, by the way. The main character in this uh, comedy, British comedy, his character's name was Victor Meldrew. And he had this phrase that he would use when things went wrong. And Donna knows what's coming. It went like this. I don't believe it. He said it when things went like they weren't supposed to go. I don't believe it. Well, it didn't just stick with me. Turns out that phrase stuck with pretty much everybody in Britain because 19 years after the show was off the air, 19 years, the show's been off the air, 19 years. 2,000 people are surveyed on the, their favorite or most important or top catchphrase in Britain, and guess what it was? It was Victor Meldrew's, I don't believe it. Obviously, it made an impression. Look it up on YouTube. You'll get to see his portrayal. It's pretty brilliant. Um, what I love about this, I mean, the disciples said that to the women. Look, this is what happened. And you just heard him. They basically, the disciples said, I don't believe it. <laughs> but I love what Easter is about. Is it's about taking this I don't believe it of disbelief and taking our I don't believe it's about the things that went wrong and flipping them all around to become this I don't believe it. It's just too good to be true, and yet it's not true. Jesus really is risen, and God really is invested and has the power and the desire to turn everything around from wrongness to goodness. The I don't believe it, Jesus is risen, first of all, starts on their part in terms of a, it's just not possible. I mean, we saw him, he was dead. We know dead. He was put in a tomb. And yes, in his life, Jesus raised some people from the dead, but that was different. This is like, He's dead. I don't believe it. It's not possible that he's alive. And yet he is. And yet he is. And their reaction of disbelief to this news is actually great affirmation for us of the truthfulness of what happened. If they would have just gone, oh yeah, that's what he said, and now he's alive, and yeah, great, it would have been less believable than the fact that they saw him dead, and they're going, no, I don't believe it. He was dead. Their reaction is really an affirmation of the reality that he really was crucified, he really was dead. And it was, they, they couldn't believe it, that he was alive. So first of all, they couldn't believe that physically he's alive, but the second one is kind of my favorite one. I don't believe it, Jesus is risen! It's too good to be true. This is too good to be true. You hear this later in Luke's account. Later on in the day, Jesus appears in the midst of the disciples and says, peace to you. And they thought he was a spirit. So Jesus invites him to touch them and see that he's not a spirit. And then Luke tells us this. And while they still disbelieved for joy, and we're marveling, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? So this, they disbelieved for joy, is that I don't believe it. This is just too good to be true. Now I hope you've had lots of those experiences in your life where you, you worked really hard for something and it just it was so hard to achieve it that when it actually finally happens, you go, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. No, any, any Olympic gold medal winners here? Excellent! What did you win it in? Being a Christian. Being a Christian! Pretty quick thinking on your feet there, on your 
chair there, Elmer. Yeah, well done. I like it. We've, you've probably had these and you just didn't realize it. Maybe you worked on a, a particular goal that you worked really, really, really hard for. It was really hard. And when it happened, it was like, I don't believe it. I achieved it. Maybe it was getting an A in, a, in, a, in, in an exam. Maybe it was finishing some home project that it wasn't coming easy. Maybe it's a relationship kind of thing that you worked really, really hard for because you really wanted this relationship. Maybe it's with your spouse. I don't believe it. She actually loves me. She said yes. I don't believe it. Or maybe it was a child. I'm going to pick on you again. After two boys, when our girl was born, your response was? It's a girl. It's a girl. It's a girl. It's a girl. I don't believe it, it's a girl. <laughs> Too good to be true, but it's true. You see, that's, that's the resurrection. It's too good to be true, but it is true. You've had these experiences, and you've, you've had another one that you may not realize, and it's the most amazing of them all. You've won the lottery, and you never bought a ticket. You didn't know that, did you? You did, you won the lottery, and you never even bought a ticket. Because Jesus bought a ticket for you. And he, he paid the price for this ticket with his life. And so you've got the winning number. And he's given you the ticket. Are you going to receive it? You don't have to pay anything for it. But that's going to be your question, right? What does it cost me? No, no, you don't have to pay anything for it. It's here. It's yours. I want it for you. So you don't have to pay anything for it. But if you receive it, if you receive this winning lottery ticket, it changes everything. It changes everything. So that you receive the I don't believe it goodness of everlasting life. Thriving thriving in the undeserved love and forgiveness of God the Father for you and for all. Paul describes this experience in Romans 6 where he says what we've been given, it's not a ticket to sin. Well, I can keep sinning because I get forgiven. No, it's a ticket that moves us to seek to live Following Christ in the life that he's given us. Following him in his grace and following him in his love and following his teachings. So that's the what of this. Isaiah 61 tells us the how. Jesus chose Isaiah 61 and some other things, that passage that you heard. He chose this as what he wanted to read in his hometown at the very beginning of his earthly ministry. And seeing the way that people in his hometown are responding to the reading, he compares himself to Elijah, who could only find sanctuary amongst a widow in a foreign country in Zarephath. And he compares himself to Elisha, who though there were lots and lots of lepers in Israel, only healed one, Naaman, who was a Syrian. And the people in his hometown respond this way. I don't believe it. Who does he think he is? We knew his father. We saw him growing up. I don't believe it. Who does he think he is comparing himself to Elijah, to Elisha? We are here today celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, which proves he is greater, greater than Elijah and Elisha. And it proves that the spirit that he talked about in Isaiah 61 is being put on him, has been put on him to put it in you and me and to put it in everyone who has believed. And that is the how of how.
how we live this new and everlasting life. It's by the Holy Spirit, which Jesus, risen from the dead, has the authority and the power to put in you, in your baptism, so that you have the, the very Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead, working in you, working in me, working in everyone who believes, everyone who receives the ticket. Here, receives the ticket. Everlasting life from my Father's love. I paid the price for it. It's yours. Now it's true that like that phrase that the women were greeted with when they went to the tomb, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? It's true that we get caught up in these moments. We know Christ is risen, but we get caught up in these moments. It's like we're not really living like he's alive. It's like we're looking for the lifelessness of Christ by just not expecting him to be giving us life. We have sometimes those I don't believe it moments about the promises of God and I don't believe it moments about what Christ is calling us to in our life. And then when we wake up, we find ourselves going, I don't believe it. How did I get here again? I don't believe it. How did I get here again, once again, having strayed off the track of the life that Christ gives? I don't believe it. How did I get here again? Feeling guilty, feeling shame, struggling with life that Christ has really fully already given me. I don't believe it. How did I get here again? And then we get another I don't believe it. When we receive yet once again Christ's promise. I am with you. I really am with you. I'm not with you to condemn you. I am risen with all authority and power that you know my faithfulness to forgive you. To love you. To say I am with you to help you. And the very spirit that was on me is in you. Guaranteeing. Guaranteeing. The everlasting life and my father's love. That I promised you. We're here today celebrating the resurrection of Jesus as being true. Celebrating it being for everyone. Celebrating it being for you. For me. Jesus risen from the dead is still working in us and everyone who receives it to guarantee the surprise of that glorious day. When we see him face to face. And the goodness of what we experience at that point in time is going to have us all going around I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. We sing now all the vault of heavenly God. thankful Jody is joining us because I decided on the third verse to have a ladies and men's part. So thank you, Jody, for coming up and helping me with this. I just love the, I just love this song. It's such a wonderful hymn of praise. What a great one to sing on Easter. Oh, here we go. I think you should stand.
Christ rising turns our despair into joyful praise. From death, everlasting life has burst forth. Christ's rising shows the Father's love for all his children. From the death of sin, life-changing forgiveness bursts forth. Christ's rising brings the joy of living in God's love to us. From the despair of doubt, the promise of true life with Jesus is here. Alleluia! I invite Pauline to come forward and lead us in prayer. Join me in praying. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for creating this world and all that is in it. We thank you, Father God, for loving us so much that you promised to send your one and only Son to redeem and save the world from sin and total destruction. Jesus, we thank you for coming to earth and bringing being our brother and role model, and for taking upon yourself our sins. You willingly suffered and died for us and rose again from the dead, returning to your Father in heaven, just to assure us eternal life. We sincerely thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much that you would willingly endure all of this for us sinners. Holy Spirit, we are so grateful that you are still among us to give us peace, comfort, and encouragement that we need daily to strengthen our Christian faith in our triune God. Heavenly Father, we know that you hear us when we pray, and we ask that you would watch over this world that you created. Direct the leaders of our nation and all of the other countries to make wise choices. We pray for all believers in this world that they may be joined together in fellowship today, remembering the joy and the meaning of Easter. We also pray for those who do not yet know you, that you would open their eyes and ears to your word and their hearts to the Holy Spirit's invitation. We pray also for those who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit, that you will give them peace, comfort, and hope in their distress. Today, Lord, we are in awe as we praise, honor, and give thanks to you and celebrate your Son, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. How blessed we are to join with the hymnist uh, that was saying, I know that my Redeemer lives. He lives all glory to his name. He lives my Savior still the same. What joy this blessed assurance gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Now pray with me together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. From Ash Wednesday through Lent, we've been using a series about following Jesus in the adventure of a lifetime. Looking at how we might have responded then if we were with Jesus and then seeing how that also shows up in our life today as we seek to follow Christ, risen from the dead. Uh, these are some of the experiences that we came across. Whoa, I didn't expect that. Yes! You show him, Jesus. Surely you don't mean us, Jesus. I'm with him. I'm with Jesus. I don't like this. I knew it. I knew it. I never thought it would come to this. 
this. That was Good Friday. And life and hope and faith is brought to all of these experiences and more through today's I don't believe it. Jesus is risen. So we go knowing that nothing can separate us from God's love. And knowing God's heart for everybody to know his love and live with them forever. So we go seeking to share with the world the surprising way of God to bring faith and everlasting life in his love through Jesus. Dying Christ. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And in Jesus' name, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. And now we are going to end the service by singing just kind of like what we did at the beginning. Christ the Lord is risen today. Different tune, but awesome words. And I just told uh, Joel and his team and everybody, everybody just come up on the stage so we have everybody up there making this announcement. <laughs>